Albert here on this uh, great Bristol Sporting Club show featuring the Western Counties against the Army. But tell us about these two boys, Craig. This bag's at 58 kilos, so it's quite light, guys. He's against Sam Little from the Barton Hill Boxing Club. He's uh, boxing there from the South Pole stance. And uh, both lads South Pole there, and as you'll notice, uh, usually it doesn't make for too much of a tidy bout, but good shot selection already from both guys. Why would that be, though, Craig, if it doesn't make uh, a great bout? Because they're just the opposite of what they normally are, so it's not like feet are going to get in the way or anything, is it? That's right, but they're kind of... They mirror each other, Nigel, and the front foot's trying to, each trying to cancel the other one's front foot out, and, uh, you know, it, generally it ends up in a bit of a mess. <laughs> Great front hook there from uh, Josh Frayne. But Sam Little coming back with a good counter. It's quite a tidy bout, Nigel, so far. Certainly is. Well, we know the Army always put up fantastic opposition in these uh, matches over the years. Uh, it's only in recent years, really, the Western counties have had a little bit more success, haven't they? And uh, we hope, hope for the same today, being a little bit biased on this occasion. That's right. We've got the Army uh, development team, and uh, we've got a full, con uh, full card this evening, 10 bouts. That's largely due to James Allen, who's head of the uh, Army development team. And uh, as I say, the quality is still very much there, but they're not full-time athletes like the first team are. OK, well, that's interesting to know. So uh, potentially we could be seeing some of these uh, Army boxers here on... Uh, on the sporting club show for several years to come very much so and as we all know the army well they do okay boxing don't they reasonably yeah that's right <laughs> it's their job to be fit and i say the first team are more or less full time uh they're seconded from their duties it's a strong finish there from sam little this is three twos both guys fairly novice at the moment but uh, all action first round certainly was sam little from barton hill then uh, doing himself proud in this elite lightweight contest and uh of course, Barton Hill with a great tradition, great little club, and uh, and it's, we shouldn't underestimate the importance to the local clubs in the in the Western Counties for having a representative on this team. It's absolutely fantastic, you know. It's everyone's uh, first aspiration in boxing to represent the region, and from the region, hopefully, you go on to box your coat, uh, you know, for your country and then GB. It's the first starting point, and uh, Sam will be double pleased tonight to box in the Western Counties vest and represent, uh, represent his region in front of his home crowd. Yeah, and, and what do you think it means for the army man Josh Frain? Uh, uh, is, uh, just being in front of a crowd like this, I suppose, is, is different from what he would normally expect. Well, you can see the look on Josh's face. He's just pleased to be here. You know, they love to compete, don't they? They really do. And uh, it's a great attitude that they've got, the army boxing team, all over the world. Uh, not only in terms of sport, but in terms of, uh, of commitments as well and uh, we're very grateful we got the best armed services in the world. Certainly have. So this is round number two then, and it's uh, the white vest of Sam Little from Barton Hill facing us as we sit ringside. And fair old amount of leather being thrown here, and they're both getting a little wild, but they're both making some sort of contact as well, but uh, just a little bit ragged from both of them. And uh, that's a good way of wearing yourself out, isn't it, going at it that fiercely mid midway through the contest? Absolutely. Well, uh, as you say, Sam Little there, he's only had 16 bouts um, and Josh Frayne 15. So, as you can tell, he's still very, very new at the game. But, um, as I say, great work rate, nice, yeah. superbly fit guys. A lot of round arm punches, swings coming in. And the referee just stepping in just to tidy it up a little bit and instructs them to box, which they certainly will. So uh, Josh Frayne from the army, just trying to get the range, lands that left hand, but uh, Sam Little steps inside. I don't know whether the bam on his shorts is a description of some of the shots he lands or whether it's a relation or just a nickname for him. What do you know, Craig? Uh, bam Little. I believe, the front to, of his shorts, yeah. to be honest with you, it's... Uh, some sort of typo, I would imagine. But, uh, <laughs> having said that, let's go with the fact it's the shots that he throws. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like a cartoon, bam, or let's, thwack. Let's, let's think positively. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but uh, strong finish from the uh, from the soldier. Yeah, again, we, we say this over the years, don't we? But uh, you'd think that Army Fitness might tell, even if they're not the, uh, the Army first team. They obviously very physically fit just in the day job, aren't they? Hugely. Uh, 24 rifles. Usually first in theatre, front line, 
and a uh, great first round now you can tell the three twos pace night yeah very very fast indeed and uh, the majority of our contests this evening are three threes but uh, lively good to watch I'm leaning towards the soldier in that first round that was the second round beg your pardon I think wasn't it <laughs> Do you know, I don't know anymore. <laughs> we were so quick off the mark this evening. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, but, it was. Uh, in any event, quality round. Certainly was. And uh, for those of you watching this coverage, you'll see in the far side over the, uh, the top table that uh, there's Pat Lamb, the uh, head coach of Bristol Rugby, is the sporting guest of the night, together with uh, various top brass from the army. So uh, it's. And there are a number of other Bristol rugby uh, figures in the in the room as well. Chris Boy, the chairman, is here. Mark Tainton, the chief operating officer. The rugby club, uh, big supporters of of uh, the sporting club. That's right. Now, what a big guy that is. This one is a big unit. That, that's uh, alongside Chris Roberts, who's the highest ranking ABA official in the British Army's international referee. So here we go with the third round. Yep, and. Uh, who can uh, catch the uh, the judges' eyes in this final round? Certainly no lack of intent from Little, but he's getting picked off a little bit by Josh Crane for the army. Up on his toes, looking for the opportunities. Little trying to get forward, getting caught on the way in. Some good movement by Crane, turning away from the the ropes are getting back into the middle of the ring and then picks his man off again as he comes in so he's doing very nicely moving very very sharply and sweetly on his uh, up on his toes isn't he that's right really good angles there good shot selection from the soldier it's going to come down to the fitness i think night is yeah. uh he's gone through the gears is uh josh brain and uh i think it's just a little bit too fast to pace for sam still very much in the contest but uh, as I say, the cleaner stuff coming from Josh Frayne. Yeah, Josh Frayne not only making himself a difficult target to hit, but as Craig rightly said, he's finding lots of great angles. And there's a good shot from Little. Catches uh, Josh Frayne uh, for once on his way back. And he, he certainly tagged him there. So that was an impressive shot by Sam Little. And if uh, Josh Frayne was beginning to think he had this in the bag, that was a little reminder that it's not over until the bell rings. Absolutely, I'd say the Bartonell guys will not go quietly in terms of boxing in every other respect. <laughs> Certainly won't. So, coming up to a fantastic finish then to this contest. Can't be too much longer left and in fact there it is there is the bell to end the first contest as competitive as you might have expected and hoped for and uh, applause from the uh, packed house here at the Bristol Hotel Sam Little against Josh Frayne and we'll have to wait and see what the judges thought of that one Thank you gentlemen resort to vote number one the unanimous decision to frame in the blue corner. So this is the second bout of the match between the Western Counties and the Army here at the Bristol Hotel 2017. Where's another year gone? I'm not quite sure. And this is Nico White from the Army in the uh, black vest against Bradley O'Connor from Intense ABC in the white vest for the Western Counties. Craig Turner alongside me again and uh, this looks once more like an extremely well-matched contest which 
I know you know a bit about it because I think you matched this one, didn't you? I did, yeah. I matched this show this evening and it was an uh, absolute pleasure doing business with the Army Development team. They're just fantastic, the commitment that they got to the sport. Um, this is a light welterweight contest, 62 kilos and uh, quite stocky kids, strong looking though, aren't they, yeah. that way? Yeah. Um, shot selection there from the guys. It's favouring close range at this early stage. And uh, more of a thinking about this one, nice. Okay. So, uh, what will Bradley O'Connor have to think about after the first round? He's sussing out the, the army man, Nico White. Some powerful uh, shots coming in from to, from the uh, the army guy, but uh, taken on the arms by O'Connor. Again, both trying to land body shots at the moment. A big swing and miss there. Brought an ooh out of the audience. Certainly uh, some punishing body shots from both men coming in here. Just trying to get the arms down and then go back to the head again. And it's digging that left hook into the ribs. It's a vicious shot, that, isn't it? That's right. We said that um, Bradley's very stocky stocky guy powerful and uh, certainly making the most of his uh, attributes there punch into the body he's getting under the elbow as well now just very few that are actually hitting the elbow they're going around the guard and uh, Marty Dan and his team down in Incense in Plymouth uh, they, they produce some damn good kids and uh, Bradley will come no exception however early days and uh, soldiers are used to taking uh, Going through adversity yeah. and still conquering. Well, he's so, taken uh, about half a dozen really tough body shots there, isn't he? That left hook into the rib. So, uh, it's the core, the core fitness, the core strength coming to the fore there for the army guy. Uh, they were both, they were both going downstairs. Is, is it just me, Craig? Maybe I know I'm getting old and everything, but <laughs> I, I don't remember body shots being quite such a part in amateur boxing as it is now. That's right. I mean, we, we missed the trick for so many years now. It's, it's a far bigger target than the head. And uh, the vast majority of the time, it's not covered. Um, the head's moving. And the old adage in boxing, punch to the body and the head will fall. I think you'll find this is absolutely true. And uh, so now with the, new, with the new scoring system as well, body shots are almost favoured. Mm. So, uh, as I say, it's working to great effect for young Bradley O'Connor at the moment. We know amateur boxing has got a great tradition, but maybe in the 60s and 70s, maybe the 80s, was it maybe seen to be not the done thing to, to concentrate on the body? That's right, almost. Um, as I say, when the, when the clickers were in, it was one shot, one point. Uh, everyone was favouring on the outside just headshots. But now we're on the 10-point mess system, which is as near to the professional game as you can get. Uh, walking the guy down and nice aggressive shots to the head and body uh, seems to favour the, the judges. Yeah, well, this is uh, second round. Well, we see the same tactics from Bradley O'Connor. Well, the army boy getting in some body shots too in reply. So, battle of attrition over by the ropes. Again, those body shots just pinging into the ribs. Nico White backed up against the ropes. Tries the uppercut to get out of the uh, vice-like grip that he's under from O'Connor, just pressing him in, into that corner. And again, oh, that's a good uppercut there, got through the guard of O'Connor, so he just can't re can't rely on just being able to pummel his opponent. Uh, there's something coming back. Absolutely not, not with a service, kid. That was great shot selection there from and another good shot left hand there. It seems that he can punch with both hands. Yeah, and he, yeah, and he replied with a... He, he, Got dug one into the, the ribs with the left hand, and then the right hand came in and clipped him around the, the side of the head. So, uh, doing exactly that, going downstairs and then opening up the target above. And credit to both lads, he's very, very clean on his side. Referee Ken Brain's not had to intervene no. for holding or uh, any work from the heads. Very clean stuff. Credit to both guys. Yeah, really tough contest. And comparative, still novices. I just see Bradley's had nine bouts, winning six. Nico 13 and 7. So uh, very new at the game. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's a uh, tough sport, we all know that. And these boys are certainly proving it in the second round. There's the 10-second uh, clapper. And there'll be 
they'll be very grateful to have a little bit of a breather there. Great effort, great stamina by both both boys. So, uh, in the uh, in the home corner, so to speak, the Plymouth corner. What will they be telling him now? Just keep up that same sort of work rate? I would imagine they know if they let the soldier get behind his reach, then, you know, it could be a different contest. So they've got to close him down and use his, his physical attributes. The Army guys, I would imagine, would tell him they've got to get back behind his jab, get back behind the long levers. And uh, you can just see there, if this kid could fight like the coach, we'd be OK. <laughs> um, but the right uppercut left up because he had some success with the right uppercut, you remember, Nigel, in the, in the last yeah. round. But uh, Bradley O'Connor needs to keep that intensity up. But uh, this soldier, typical as we've seen down the years, Nigel, he will not go quietly. No, he certainly won't. So here we go with the third round then. Ken Brain holds the boxes apart until the bell goes. There's the bell to start the final round. So what will the army come back with in this final round you fancy O'Connor's maybe uh, in front at the moment but you don't quite know so O'Connor with the right hand there having some success of course he's sewn it into the uh, he's sewn it into the consciousness of Nico White to expect the the left hook to the ribs and then he's surprised when something else comes from a different angle that's playing with his with his mind as much as his body at the moment Bradley O'Connor switching it around a little bit not being predictable all the time still landing sufficient left hooks but when uh, his opponent thinks it's going to be a left hook he comes up with something else that's right as I say he switches the attack noise doesn't he I mean you get you got a left hook the body left hook to the head and equally the other sides of oh that's a good shot there left hook from the soldier can never count them out can you and a good right hand as well Bradley doing the smart thing, walking him down, not giving him any room to punch. But when he does there. get the room, he lands, doesn't he? He does very much so. It's a great effort, effort from Nico now. Knows he's up against it, so he answers the call. Yep, so O'Connor then walking him, this man down again, getting him over into that neutral corner. And uh, White trying to fight his way out of it. Great effort by both boys. and. O'Connor's just regained his equilibrium a bit, but then walks onto one. That's right, superb effort from Nico here. Getting through some quality shots. And Bradley won't be denied, he's walking forward, keeping doing, you know. If it, oh, good shot, left hook. Apologies for excitement there. <laughs> well, it's exciting, it is exciting, you're absolutely excused. And, and now uh, the uh, army boxer, Nico White, giving some back his, as well. He's stood up to the pummeling he's taken brilliantly and he now he's finishing off strongly landing shots of his own and there's the bell to end a fantastic contest they hug one another and they could quite easily i think just stand and hold on to one another just to keep standing because they put so much effort in and a lovely acknowledgement there to ken brain uh, from brad he threw a little shot he acknowledged it and uh, you know tremendously sorry for that a uh, good hug at the end, and as always at Bristol Sporting Club, some tremendous sportsmanship. Yeah, certainly was. So, once again, the uh, judges have a slight conundrum. We'll wait and see what they decided. Ladies and gentlemen, you saw that number two, you got a decision to O'Connor in the red corner. by Regal Amusements on table two and Hardy Retail on table 15. It's a light welter -welt contest of three three minute rounds between in the blue corner representing the army Ross Buckingham and in the red corner representing Western Counties Tom Williams. Williams in the red, Buckingham in the blue. So another light welterweight contest to entertain us here between 
Ross Brackenbridge from the Army and Tom Williams from Downend here in Bristol. Uh, Craig as ever will declare an interest in uh, Tom Williams, but uh, I know he's an extremely promising boxer. What do you know about his opponent, first of all? Well, Ross Brackenridge, he's uh, with the Scots Dragoon Guards, yeah, very old famous regiment knight, and uh, 28 years of age. And Tom Williams there, he's been out with the ring now for about 18 months, Tom, because he uh, went to college to train as an electrical fitter. But uh, bought some really good lads as a junior, Archie Sharp, who's just gone professional, uh, amongst others. The statistics here, nice 42 and 119 from Tom and 21 10 from Ross. So did Tom take a, a break from boxing because he was just so busy with his training Was that uh, for his work? Was that the reason? That's right, absolutely. He uh, did the right thing. Priorities, of course, because boxing's okay, but the money's rubbish. <laughs> so um, so uh, Tom's uh, done the right thing, got his priorities right, and some nice shot selection there from him. Very good defensive boxer is Tom, but when he holds his feet, he comes undone. You can't hold your feet in front of a soldier because they're big punchers, strong, fit, as you'd expect them to be. Okay. So what sort of level of, op of opposition has he faced before? Is this going to be one of his toughest bouts so far? I would say so. Uh, Tom's only had one other senior contest, and that was against uh, 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 Royal Air Force opponent. Oh, yeah. Um, and he was stopped in the third round. It was all a boy against the man, really, because uh, everyone's got different developmental uh, period uh, night and uh, this young lad called uh, Kieran Bailey from the Air Force. And, uh, superb contest but unfortunately Tom ran out of steam there, very new at 3 threes. Okay, well it'll be interesting to see how he fares in this one then. It's uh, developing into a nice little uh, battle between the two of them, just still sizing one another up in this first round. Tom throwing out the jab, going forward, trying to land combinations and gets in a few decent shots there and he's got the army man just backtracking a little bit so he's moving him around the ring certainly, giving him something to think about. The army jab comes out and then tries a swinging long right that doesn't land short. Jab through the guard again from the Bristol boy. Intent in both of their eyes as they size up the opposition. Fierce concentration from Ross Brackenridge. Very skillful about Nigel. Uh, good shot selection. You can tell it's absolute intense concentration on both guys' faces, as you said. Yeah. And uh, clever stuff there from Tom. That's the extra experience. Tom's yeah. just undergone some extra strength and conditioning training with uh, Trojan Fitness, I believe, here in Bristol. Okay. And he tapped me playfully in the belly the other night and uh, nearly sat me down. <laughs> really? So, uh, yes. And if I'd have fell on him, he'd have been in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was an interesting first round, though, as you say. A lot of thought going into it, a little bit more tactical than the first two bouts we've seen so far this evening. But uh, Tom Williams certainly acquitted himself uh, pretty well in that uh, first Three minutes against Ross Brackenbridge from the Army. The uh, down end boy deciding to stand up. Simon Pirrett giving him some words of advice. Wise ones, I'm sure. Absolutely. <laughs> we had a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> I think Simon's actually telling him how he, how he won his bout about 25 years ago or something. A veteran's bout, obviously, at that age. That's right, he should have been about 40 then, I would imagine. <laughs> but uh, Grania Quinn just helping out. I should have a special message to Grania. Uh, in the height of the troubles, her dad started the Ardoin Boxing Club in Northern Ireland. And they brought that community together, absolutely fabulous. Catholic, Protestant, brought them together, and they're still going today, I'm proud to say. We're very proud to have Grania with us. Oh, well done to her and her family. That's excellent. So, second round then, between Tom Williams for the Western Counties in the white vest and Ross Brackenbridge for the Army in the black. It's pretty even the first round, a little bit cagey, lots of concentration, learning process for both boys. And Tom Williams lands a couple of decent punches there. For the first time a little bit on the back foot now as uh, 
the army boy Brackenridge launches an attack but Williams back trying to press him again that nice footwork by uh, Brackenridge turns his man back in the centre of the ring so both unleashing a little bit more in the uh, centre of the ring a little mark under the right eye of uh, Brackenridge by the look of it a good solid right hand there from Williams gets through of the two uh, I would say Brackenridge looks like he's breathing slightly the heavier at the moment which is a good sign from Williams and good movement by Williams there up on his toes and just move nicely to the left to get out of the way caught a couple there from the army man Try, he's trying to get in on the inside and uh, Williams just wisely holds on a little bit so he can regroup referee telling them to keep their heads up a big swing by uh, Brackenridge falls short with the right hand so it's the movement of uh, Williams that's keeping him out of trouble at the moment and then slips in a couple of body shots there as uh, Brackenridge is slightly off balance but this is this is good movement from your boy Craig he's got good feet always has since he was a little boy that's God given that's nothing that we've done and um, oh, go on take some credit for it <laughs> absolutely not I want to hear have it said but um, Tom has always had the punching ability that he couldn't crack an egg yeah. and uh, you're reminiscent of Martin Robbins do you remember Martin yeah. same thing very very good boxer but you know, again if that was anyone else he'd knock him out yeah it was good left hand wasn't it but, it was uh, great left hand yeah. It's a bit like me playing cricket. I used to have a magnificent cover drive, but it wouldn't get off the square, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Impressive performance by uh, Tom Williams up till now, in, deep into the second round. Good work. That, that extra experience, forgive me, nice. Yeah. Um, that extra experience just showing there. 42 bouts as a junior or otherwise, it's a lot of experience yeah. against a 20 bout kid who is as strong as you like and will not stop coming in. No, really good from both boxers there. Tom Williams will be well pleased with his effort in that uh, second round. Chooses to stand and not use the, uh, the stool. Packed house here at uh, the Christmas show for the Bristol Sporting Club. Uh, as I said at the start of the evening when I introduced it from the top table, this is for a lot of people who come here every year, this is the start of the Christmas season, officially, isn't it? That's Forget right. December the 1st and or all the ads in, in September. Um, the, the Bristol Sporting Club against a uh, show with the army, the visitors, uh, always heralds the festive season. That's right, it's the start of the celebrations for uh, ladies and gentlemen here at the uh, Sporting Club. And uh, as you say, I, th I thank John Thornell, who's uh, president these days, I'm telling me earlier on, there's nearly 250 people here. So. Uh, yeah. That's great. Great news for Western Counties Boxing. Certainly is. And the Army love coming here. And there we can see coming out of the blue corner, Nico White for the uh, third and final round of what's been a, an excellent, well-matched contest so far. So who's going to uh, take charge of round number three? Williams Park wrestles his man round off balance. Just gains the initiative again in the early moments of this round. So the jab coming in from Nico White. Uh, Williams keeping at range, just trying to release his right arm there a little bit. Again, the big right hand coming in from Nico White, but just lands, uh, uh, from Ross Brackenbridge rather, just lands a little bit short. Busy work rate by Williams. Getting in some good shots, as Craig says, maybe not the power that he would wish for. Good little uppercut as the two break. And he's just 
manoeuvring his man round the ring quite nicely at the moment. It's, it's definitely Williams who's dictating the pace of the contest. Just great shot selection from Tom. And as I said, it's God-given. Since he was a little boy, he was able to do that. But uh, a great friend of mine, Fred Randall, he said uh, Tom's punches is like a fly crapping on you. <laughs> Excuse language, but I think that's fairly accurate. Yeah. Well, there's a swarm of them coming in on... Uh, Ross Brackenridge at the moment, he'll be uh, glad to hear the bell at the end, I think. He's put in a really gallant effort, but I think probably, and I'm not counting my chickens, but I think probably the judges must have been impressed by Tom Williams' performance, his work rate, general manoeuvrability around the ring. Downstairs by Williams. Brackenridge covers up and... Williams gets in close and, and good finish to the fight by Williams he's really kept the pace going while well, maybe Brackenridge is tired just a little bit it's Williams who's as I say, dictated the pace well, that's a good body shot by the army boy landed flush in the in the stomach there and uh, he's not giving up is he is oh he and another up? one there yeah. it's a show finisher night it's as good as a tap on the chin these body shots but what a great effort there from uh, Ross Brackenridge. Maybe Tom really does sooner. need to move now. He really does. You can't hang your chin out in front of an army guy. No. Yeah, so maybe if Brackenridge had managed this a little bit earlier in the contest, it might have been different. There's 10 seconds to go on. It's a great right hand land right on the point of the chin. But Brackenridge takes it and then holds on. And that's just about going to be the last of the action, I suspect. The bell will go any moment now. There it is. And again, well done to both boxers. Fantastic effort. They both wanted it badly, and uh, I think we all appreciated the effort. That was absolutely fantastic contest. Free freeze, lots to watch. Something for everybody there, Nigel. Bit of a punch up, some nice long range boxing, some good defensive stuff. Credit to both lads. Just goes to show it doesn't need to be blood and guts to be exciting, does it? No, but this is the thing, it's a miss up. Uh, anyone who thinks boxing isn't a thinking man's game is going around it the wrong way. Yeah. Well, let's see, talking of thinking, what the judges thought of that one. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the number three of the unanimous decision is Williams in the red corner. Excellent, okay, let me get in. Brilliant, thank you. Sponsored by the Jolly Hot and Table 22. And Taylor Maxwell on table four. There's a middleweight contest of three three minute rounds. Between in the blue corner, representing the only John Hesford. And in the red corner, representing the Western Rangers, Jordan Giles. Giles in the red, Hesford in the blue. So we move into the middleweight division for the fourth bout in the match between the Western Counties and the Army. John Bezik for the uh, the Army against Jordan Giles for the Western Counties. Jordan Giles from Froome ABC and a proud moment for him I'm sure to be stepping up and representing the region. And a lively start already. They're both exchanging close range blows. The, uh, the Army boy John Bezik. Looks like he's uh, got plenty of power. Low, holds his hands quite low, but it looks like he's trying to land that big right hand if he can. But at the moment, they're just in a bit of a clinch. So tell us a little bit about these guys then. Yeah, Jordan Giles from Froome. He's a uh, 70 kilo lad, so full on middleweight. Night, uh, 14 bouts, winning 12 against John Bezik. John from the Royal Logistics Corps, 25 years of age. 
formerly with a parachute regiment is the tattoo on his I was going to say, I was yeah. going to say, how can he be logistics when he's got those tattoos? Yeah. That's right, great shot from him there. Jordan unlucky in the development championships recently with a, a compatriot of uh, Basic. Big punches from both guys, they're not hanging around, are they? No. So it's a uh, middleweight division, as we say, so plenty of power on display and the uh, Southpaw style of the uh, Froome boxer, Jordan Giles. Again, getting in a clinch close on, the referee having to have a call break. Just a little bit untidy at the moment, the slight clash of styles between the two of them. Again, a lot going on on the inside there. The uh, army boxer Bessing just asking a referee to sort it out if he could. So lots of holding and leaning, leaning on here. Just trying to keep the uh, opposition at bay and not give him any leverage. Certainly, the power shots coming in from Bessing. Good right hand landed there. He tries another. Right hook that misses, and then an uppercut. So Bezik certainly feeling he can attack, and then they both land on the way into the ropes right above us here in the commentary position. Both unleashing and not holding back on the power here. They've uh, sussed one another out close in, and now we're just beginning to see them trying to throw a little bit more from some sort of range. That's right, Jordan there trying to load with the right hand a little bit. His game here is long range, definitely. He's got uh, the longer reach. And, uh, just worn there for uh, a little bit of forearm barge, I suppose, Knight. Yeah. And, uh, good right hand. And he really does need to keep it long against this army lad. Very, very strong guy. Yeah, first 30 seconds, 40 seconds or so of that round, they were, they were in close, it was all a little bit untidy, and then when they began to suss one another up, the gap began to emerge between the two and they both started to unload. That's right, I suppose that little bit of adrenaline, you know, uh, a friend of mine, Ian Lindsay, experienced referee, said you usually let it go for the first 20 seconds, let them get the tension out of themselves, then you stop it and clean it up. And uh, I think that's right, uh, guys hyped up and, uh, you know, and then eventually they settle into it. Very calm corner there from uh, James Allen and his charge. Yeah, as I say, good body shot there from James. <laughs> uh, James, James Allen, of course, in the over in the blue corner. We we've seen him box here. We have uh, many times, in fact, haven't we? We have indeed. Yeah, first team army, absolutely fantastic going. I quite fancy him to be uh, to be a first team army coach before too very long. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's certainly got the experience in the ring to know what to tell. The younger boxers coming up through the army development ranks. And here we go, round number two then, this middleweight contest. It's uh, Jordan Giles of Froome in the white vest for the Western Counties. John Bezig in the black vest for the army. And if it develops the uh, same way it did in that first round, then we'll see Bezik looking to land that big right hand if he can. And the uh, Froome boxer trying to get that left jab out just a little bit of a range finder so I think certainly uh, Jordan is a little wary of the power of the army boxer and Bezik not afraid to step inside and land shorter range shots if he can So again, just getting a little bit untidy. Both guys just kind of relaxing now as we go on uh, night. You'll notice um, shot selections of better quality, uh, especially from the soldier there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think he's. I think Bezik's just beginning to get a little bit on top of the the quality of the shots that he's throwing, and he's he's landing more. Very much so. The the Froome guys, Tony Kelly, and his team, uh, just trying to encourage uh, Jordan to keep it long keep it get, and better from him there yeah yeah so by 
by no means one-sided contest this at all. The uh, taller man, Jordan, uh, seems to have got uh, Bezik trapped, holding onto his arm so he couldn't uh, manoeuvre. Jordan Giles. Good couple of uh, left jabs coming out from Giles. And again, just getting into that clinch on the inside. Both breathing really hard as you'd expect. So coming towards the end of the round. Clever, clever. Clever stuff there, a good turn from Jordan. Turn the aggressor in the corner, use his strength against him. And the army guy, these kids coming for it are so strong now, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. Very so strong. strong. He's maneuvering him round the uh, the ring just by his physical presence. That's right. Well, I suppose you don't get that red berry for nothing. No, absolutely. So last ten seconds of the round. Slight warning for use of the head. Some appreciative applause from the uh, the diners here at the Bristol Sporting Club. And uh, how would you see this one going as we approach the third round, Craig? I think as the guys are settling down, is making for a better contest. Um, I think the soldier has got better at work in the moment, Nigel, for my money. Yeah. Uh, what say you? Yeah, I'd, I'd absolutely agree. Yeah. 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 Uh, just, uh, just working his man, his opponent around the ring, isn't he? Landing the better shots. Yeah. Um, nothing to do with work rate as such, but he's just picking his shots maybe better, I think. That's right, yeah. And I think, um, again, it, it, it's all down to, to stamina. Uh, Jordan, by no means out of the contest whatsoever. When he gets back to long range, He's untouchable, but uh, he tends to buy into the fight a little bit yeah. so far. But yeah. tactical change uh, from the corner this round, and it's still anybody's. Yeah. So let's see what happens in the uh, the final minutes of the contest. And, uh, certainly, the army man is uh, just landing those shorter shots. But that's good work by Giles. Traps him in the corner and landed a couple which uh, was not part of uh, Bezik's plan. Bezik just getting in the clinch himself now, just to try and manoeuvre Jordan away from him, but for the first time, the pressure is coming on from Jordan Giles. That's right, and again, long arms, combination shots, fast hands, he's doing the job, but he's, he's getting clipped on the way in. This guy is so, so strong, Lloyd. I see both of us winced a couple yeah. of times. Yeah. Well, his right hand is very, very powerful, isn't it? He, he's, he's missed with it a couple of times, but he's also landed as well. Incredibly. And, uh, and it gives Jordan Giles plenty to think and worry about as he, as he heads in. And as you say, he's been getting picked off by that particular shot. He's such a good distance boxer is Jordan. But uh, again, let's look at the stats here. 14 bouts, one in 12 from uh, Jordan. 25 and 17 from John. John, the most uh, more experienced guy. But when he's got it long range, and when you're watching this back, Jordan, when it's long range and fast hands, had uh, very little to do then, didn't he? Yeah. So again, it's all the effort being poured into this one. And if uh, Bezik can keep it at medium to short range he's going to nullify Giles's best at assets his long levers trying to throw that big right again doesn't make contact either occasion and again just getting a little tidy uh, being warned for punching to the back of the head when they're in a clinch so, tiredness setting in a little bit, I think, here, which is, is why they're ending up Ah, oh, we got closer. a cut, unfortunately. Oh, well, that must have been... Yeah, what a high pace competition like this. Yeah. I should imagine that was an accidental... Yeah, I'm sure it was. They, they, were just, they were just uh, 
close in in the, that last little skirmish and I'm sure it was just a clash of the heads. That's unfortunate noise at this stage of the contest. Yeah, unintentional. Yeah. There we go from Clash the referee there. Said, yeah. That's a fair comment. Yeah, yeah. definitely. He's like, probably only got a minute or so to survive anyway. Don't think it's going to get too much worse. Oh, and he lands. Giles was on his way in and got caught by a left hand, didn't he? And then... Ooh, and winch. And then... Big effort by Giles looking to take advantage of the uh, the blood that will be trickling into the eye of Ross Brackenridge. Uh, Ten seconds to go, so he's gonna he's gonna make it to the end anyway. That's right. So unfortunate, night, and it is uh, looks to be a nasty one too. Yeah. So thankfully, it happened in the uh, final round. Once more, appreciative applause from the. Uh, the diners here as the doctor has a look at the army boxer and just make sure that the uh, damage isn't too severe. Might need a stitch or two in it, but uh, we'll wait and see what the uh, judge's final decision on this one was. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of number four on the split decision is Bestwick in the blue corner. Boat number five is being sponsored by Mel and Clark on table 25. This is a light heavyweight contest of three two minute rounds between in the blue corner representing the army Daniel Davis and in the red corner representing the rest of the rangers Christian Wagner. Wagner in the red, Davis in the blue. And referee Ken Brain gets us underway then. For this, the fifth bout then, light heavyweights. Christian Wagner against Daniel Devey. And Craig Turner alongside me. Tell us all you know about these. Yeah, Chris Wagner from Devices. Uh, two contests, one in two. Oh my God, that was a strong <laughs> right hand there from a far stockier looking uh, Daniel Devey. Uh, 713, and Devey, so a comparative novice. This guy is 32 years of age, 32 uh, engineers, and as you can see, this uh, the difference, both of them in uh, similar weights, Nige, but the difference in height there. It's extraordinary, isn't it, really? It is, yeah. But uh, certainly the army man looks like he's the one with the power at the moment, doesn't he? Very much so. If uh, Chris can keep it behind his jab, keep it nice and long, and of course the soldier will be looking to get past his arms. I fancy a big right hand over the top, left hook. Commentator's eye. <laughs> right. could, uh, could do the job, but good stuff there. Sticking to uh, Jack Fisher's uh, commands in the corner there from Devizes. But the right hand still threatens Nigel. Yeah. So good shots by uh, DV for the army. So the, uh, the taller man, not necessarily finding it easy here, being caught on the way on the way in by Daniel DV. So Wagner trying to use his long arms to keep him at bay and to land some of his own, but DV intent on getting in and landing some power shots from close range. Ten seconds to go in the round. Ken Brain calls break, but uh, DV intent on pressing his man up against the ropes he can and there is the bell to end that round so as a uh, physical spectacle it, 
you, know, you wouldn't think they were necessarily in the same weight division, but uh, you wouldn't. It's um, it's bizarre, isn't it, Nigel? But you can tell, obviously, the the long limbs of uh, Chris Wagner against the squatness and uh, chest <laughs> of, uh, of uh, Dan Davey. He's, he's a very solid-looking character, isn't he? I, all I can think is Chris Wagner must have very heavy bones. That's right, bones. entirely. But uh, both guys having a success in that round. Some power stuff. It's short to mid uh, mid range from uh, from Davey, and some good long stuff from uh, Chris Wagner. I say Chris, two out of two. Uh, it all depends what sort of obviously class you box in, Nigel, and uh, where you've had those contests as well. You know. This is an entirely sta uh, different level to what Chris would have been used to. Yeah. So, uh, as I say, but all to play for, I'd suggest. Yeah, you have to step up in class sometimes, don't you? And that's maybe what Christian Wagner is doing here today. And I believe I am correct in saying Wagner, not Wagner. We're not posh around here, are we? I'm sure it is Wagner. Uh, so he can compose a win. <laughs> And that was a very tenuous. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. I was thinking more of Robert Wagner and Natalie Wood, but oh, I see. that dates me. I imagine what Wagner does to me. <laughs> Going back to the 1800s there. Right. Let's concentrate on the army man then, Daniel TV is he uh, powerful, certainly powerful, and I suppose the shaven head just makes him look slightly more fearsome as well. But the most fearsome thing about him at the moment is his, are his fists as he covers up nicely there and takes those shots on his gloves. Wagner tries the uh, the jab. Stevie just st steps out of the way and then moves in himself to land. Overhand right. Just clipped his man. Wagner just stooping to get out of the way of some of these shots rather than stand up to his full height. How can you use your height in a contest like this, Craig? I'd, or how I'd, should you use it? I'd like to see Chris with his weight on the back foot, maybe 60% weight to the rear foot, 40 on the front foot. And, uh, you know, kind of bring his man in, keep his head back, because he's having success with the jab night. Yeah. But uh, the soldier's doing the right thing there, closing him down, getting past the long levers. But as I say, Chris is kind of, he needs to bring him into these long shots. But again, there you go, he's buying into a contest yeah, again there. Yeah, yeah. He's ducking into it rather than leaning away from it, isn't right. he? So if he's leaning away, then he, um, with his long arms, he could basically keep his man at bay continually, couldn't he, if he got it right? Well, that's right. I mean, I say, if, you know, if you don't like having your head punched, don't have it there. <laughs> you know, that's the key thing. Sit on the back foot, wait for the guy to come in, and um, some good old-fashioned boxing. But uh, as I say, it, it's competitive noise, isn't it? Yeah. All the way through. At the moment, I just fancy the soldier to uh, have the edge on stronger shots, forcing the contest, forcing the pace. But Chris Wagner, far from uh, far from finished. No, absolutely. I'm sure he's uh, getting a lot out of this in terms of a learning experience. Just getting a nice cooling spray. It's, uh, it's quite warm in, in the room. There's so many people packed in and the lights and all that. You forget though the days when uh, there'd have been smoke as well, don't you? <laughs> it would have been awful here, but uh, it, we can all breathe easily, quite literally these days, and uh, it's much more pleasant experience for the guys in the ring. Indeed. Because of course, uh, smoke rises, and you, somebody like Christian Wagner, you'd have been right in the cloud in the old days, wouldn't he? <laughs> That's right. So, Ken Brain, Ken Brain. Just a pause uh, there. Uh, pause here. Corner just forgot to put the gum shield in there. Yeah, surprising how often that happens, isn't it? Really, vital tool of the trade. But uh, we're underway anyway now. The final three minutes of the contest. Power again coming in from Davy, but I think yes, Ken Brain pulling him up for slapping, telling him to use the fist. <laughs> and I think the same thing happened straight away again. But never mind. Um, so Wagner now, I think it's just a concern whether it's a slap or a punch, to be honest. It's, uh, whatever it is, it's coming in with power. It's that round arm style of uh, DV that's uh, trying to get round the, the guard of the devices man. Trying the uppercut is Wagner. He stood up to the test well as 
Christian Wagner. They, uh, try, trying to use that uppercut a lot more than he was in the uh, first two rounds. He's got him more at the range he wants, hasn't he, at the moment? Uh, although now suddenly Dewey then steps in and closes the gap. But just for just for a, a moment, Wagner had got him at uh, at arm's length, so to speak. That's right. He'd found his range now, didn't he? And the uh, long range uppercut. There's a good good shot there from him. And uh, all of a sudden, the soldier is uh, He's tiring a bit. Isn't it? He is tiring. Yeah. And Chris Wagner has found his stride almost, hasn't yeah. he? Maybe Wagner's paced himself a bit better, I don't know. Maybe. The army man was certainly unleashing for the first two rounds consistently. Yeah, warning about the heads. We saw what happened in the last bout with an accidental clash of heads, but still very competitive. Last 10 seconds, big finish required. Again, the uppercut from uh, Wagner has been a useful weapon in this round. Perhaps you might feel he should have used it more earlier in the contest. And there is the bell to end it. And uh, Davey gets on a step ladder to get up to uh, give uh, Christian Wagner a bit of a hug. But that was a, that was an interesting uh, clash of uh, physiques, really, wasn't it? It was indeed. That was a good, good contest, a learning contest there for Chris Wagner, um, because this guy was relentless, wasn't he? He was climbing on him. And uh, when you see the height of Chris Wagner, that's what the majority of opponents will do. So he needs to get used to that pressure. And all credit to uh, Daniel. He, uh, he wasn't going anywhere in a hurry, was he? he no. no, he stepped on the guy and really working. The overhand right was working, left hook. Let's see what the judge is like. Absolutely. Let's wait and see. Thank you, gentlemen. The result in this contest is a split decision in favour of Wagner in the red corner. It's a heavyweight contest of three three-minute rounds. The team in the blue corner gets over the army, Leon Neuhaus. In the red corner, representing Boston County, is Max Earl. Earl in the red, Neuhaus in the blue. So we're moving up to the heavyweights for our sixth bout of the uh, the night here between the army and the western counties max earl from mayflower taking on leon nihill for the army and, uh, our referee signals the timekeeper and we're underway so uh, everyone always excited when the uh, the heavyweights come onto the scene let's see uh, what they have in store for us this evening craig alongside me uh, will give us a brief update of what he knows about these two. That's right, Max Earl, 82 kilograms from uh, Plymouth, Steve Garwin and Steve Clark in his corner there. And uh, Leon the Hill is from uh, the first uh, Prince of Wales Royal Regiment, 28 years of age, 17 contests winning 12, uh, Max 23 winning 13. So uh, army guy out of uh, the South Pole stance. Interesting start, nice, very, very thoughtful. Yep. So, let's see what uh, the home boxer, so to speak, from the Mayflower Club, Max Earl, can do, representing the Western Counties. Good left to the chin, gets through there nicely. Nye Hill, standing centre of the ring, range finder with that left arm, and then left hook connects. Carried by the gloves of Max Earl. A jab from uh, Earl. It's 
Still sizing one another up at the moment. Earl trying the uh, jab and then the right hand to follow up, but lands short with both. The big men, both pretty mobile by the look of things. Lots of movement, not a huge amount being landed at the moment, Craig. That's what I was going to say. It's a very fast pace and very mobile for uh, large guys, isn't it, Nigel? Yeah. And um, as I was say, no, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing that Max is using his feet because you, you get the sense that if he held his feet, uh, the army guy would put his head on Mars. <laughs> very strong guys. So first round coming towards the, the end about 30 seconds remaining so, nice little feint there by the army man trying to draw Earl in but he didn't fall for it ten seconds remaining There's the bell to end the round. And we uh, take a look at the army boxer, Leon Nyhill. So 17 bouts and 12 wins. Is that right? Your hieroglyphics on my list, is that right? <laughs> right, entirely. And you deciphered that, Nigel. Well done. Oh, thank Absolutely you. fantastic. <laughs> um, yeah, 17 1 12. Superbly strong guy. As you can see uh, from the heavily tattooed arms there. He's a uh, thick set young fella and uh, Max Searle from Mayflower fancy a little bit leaner as we've seen in the contest before different body shapes yeah and uh, still very much the same way uh, soldier has his success there with some uh, strong shots equally Max does what he does well long shots box him and uh, fancy first round maybe to the soldier but uh, going into the second round oh, is anybody still yeah Second round is underway. Max Earl from Mayflower in the white vest. Looking to uh, lay some leather on Leon Nyhill, his army opponent. Again, as you would be, both a little bit wary about what the other might be able to throw back. A lot of shots landing on the gloves of the opponent. There's some good defensive work going on as well. But who can step up the pace and maybe take a decisive advantage in the midpoint of this, this bout? Great concentration from, uh, from Earl. I think, you know, he knows that he's really got to be switched on the whole time. Because if, uh, if he isn't, then the army man has the, uh, the weapons and the attributes to really punish him. That's right, clever stuff there from Max. There's some uh, very subtle little angles being pulled and some sneak attacks, Nigel. Against a stronger man, uh, that could pay dividends. So Maybe not what you'd expect from heavyweights, though, the way this is panning out. It's such a fast contest, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. And I'd say they're, they're heavy guys, 82 kilos. Um, but it's a thinking contest as well, Nigel. You know, both of them are... You know, I've got respect for the other's power. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's good to watch. It certainly is. So, Earl trying to uh, land that right hand over the top if he can work it. He's just got to be oh so wary of what's coming back from the soldier. Changes the uh, angle of attack, dances around the ring. Earl not afraid to come forward and just making his man miss when he can. Nihil also good body movement there. And he lands a left hook and then follows up with a right, but partly parried by the gloves of Earl. Has 
gets a feeling of a contest that could explode, but you're not quite sure if it's going to. That's right, there's some heavier shots there from the soldier uh, in the last couple of seconds there, Noich. But equally, as again, both wary, and that's quite healthy to be wary of an 81 year <laughs> 81 kilo boy trying to whack you. Um, that's a good right hand there from Max, yeah. As again, those sneak attacks are having some effect. Didn't have a lot of power behind it, did it? But it landed on the on the target area, that's for sure. And there's the bell to end round number two. And again, really, in that one, on as even, it's going to be difficult to split them on this one, I think. I'd imagine it would be nice, and that's a sign of a good contest. Um, the majority of uh, Olympic contests, you know, are well and lost on, on split decisions because both guys are good quality. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happening here, you know, defensively very sound. Um, good, good pace. I can't quite believe the pace for, you know, for heavyweight guys. No? No, it's and very quick. And Max Earl looking in his corner there, just taking a bit of a, a gulp of drink and then <laughs> misses the bucket on the way out, but never mind. Um, but yeah, he's. Uh, He's not looking, not breathing too he heavily, considering the pace it's been for the first two rounds. So three minutes to go to settle this one between Max Earl from Mayflower for the Western Counties in the white vest and Leon Nyhill from the Army in the uh, in the black. Final round between these two at heavyweight here at the Bristol Hotel, the Bristol Sporting Club, as ever. Great Christmas occasion this every year. The heavyweights looking to make it a knockout occasion if they can, as they both landed at the same time. Uh, Nihil just caught Earl as he uh, retreated there. It's a single shot. Nobody's really managed to land combinations of punches yet, have they, Craig? It's been, uh, it's been the odd single shot here and there. It's a good corner work there from James Allen. Just tell him half a step to the right, half a step to the right, and he's used that to good effect a couple of times. It's a solid left landed on the chin of Earl there. If you were to look at uh, my heels back foot, occasionally he's taking it out with the left hook or the right hand. So he's responding well to the corner. That takes some composure, Knight. Oh, he turned him beautifully there. He's being, his left arm's being held. But uh, Nihil manages to untangle himself and without the referee needing to intervene. Again, turns nicely off the ropes as Nihil dropped his hands quite low now. Throws out the jab two, three times. If anything, Nihil begins to be a little frustrated that he's not having more success because he has, I think, dominated the contest really, but maybe not being able to really stamp his authority on it. That's right, Max, really good defensively, upper body movement, as you can see just there, Nigel. And these little sneak attacks, very accurate at times as well, but just can't seem to hold the power at bay, can he? No. It's a difficult bout to score, I think. We've got under a minute to go. Nihil again, just rocking his body from the waist, trying to get out of the way, swings twice, and uh, Earl ducks underneath it. So coming into the last uh, 30 seconds, and who's got a big finish? Anybody? Well. Nihil ducks underneath that one. Stumble there from uh, Earl. Swipe the gloves. And there we go. There's the uh, bell to end the contest. Um, I would say honours even, but we're going to have a winner. But uh, it was pretty close. Absolutely, and uh, just as you think one's on top, the other one comes back. Sign of again of a very good contest, uh, Nigel.
and the Bristol Sporting Club audience absolutely lapping this up this evening. Yeah, certainly right. So we'll wait and see what the judges thought of that. And the result by number six, gentlemen, is a split decision in favour of Nihil in the blue corner. There will now be a break in the boxing gentlemen while we have the action. The water action, they haven't got a clue. It's a youth middleweight contest of three three minute rounds. Between the Nevet or the Rep Sending Dolan and his boxing club, Owen Pira. And in the blue corner, we represent the Barrett and his boxing club, Mick Forrest. Forrest in the blue, Pirat in the red. Right, we're moving into the supporting contest now here on this uh, great Bristol Sporting Club show featuring the Western Counties against the Army. We're now into a youth middleweight supporting contest featuring uh, Nick Forrest of Barham and Owen Pirrett from Downend. And this one's going to be uh, interesting. Uh, Owen, I think, am I right? I think he's had a bit of a break from, uh, from boxing. That's right. Owen's had a knee injury, Neusch. Uh, I thought at one stage he had to have surgery to shave uh, some of the inside of the patella off. Um, so it's just rubbing a bit there, a birth defect apparently. Right. But uh, very much back to work now and he's uh, up against young Nick Forrest. I have never seen a kid just enjoy his boxing so much as young Nick. He's 25 bouts, winning six. But he's just absolutely thrives on the game. In his corner there, Gavin Lane, former uh, useful professional. And uh, the guys down at Barham in Barnstable, they do a great job down there with the kids. Yeah, that's good to hear. So it's uh, the redhead guard is uh, Owen Pirrett from Downend. So manoeuvring his way around the ring. Nick Forrest is uh, again just trying to size up. Ducks down a little bit and sends out the left jab. Herrick up on his toes. Forrest clips him with a nice left hand there as Pirrit tried to move away. Overhand right from Forrest misses the target. Again, Forrest just leaning forward to get the jab in, trying to get underneath the guard of Pirrit. Big swinging right by Pirrit. Doesn't really make the contact he was looking for. Good couple of right hand shots, body shots coming in from Pirrit. Forrest trying to fight his way out of it, push back into the uh, the red corner. In the end, the referee forced to push them apart without too much of a break in the action. Forrest uh, getting trapped in the opposite corner now. Body shots from Pirrit. Just the, think the physicality of Pirrit just beginning to have an effect here, Greg? Yeah, that's right, Nice. You get these kids, you know, 17, 18, the formative years, and uh, some of them got the physique of men, some are still boys, you know. And, and they're changing fancy. all the while as well, aren't they? That's right, entirely. It's, it's such a, a pivotal age, but the strength there coming from Owen. But uh, young Nick Forrest, he's a wily little character, isn't he? He's got a few, uh, few tricks there. Yeah. And... Um, Gavin Lane, just a, a wealth of knowledge there. Um, I remember a useful pro from Bristol, uh, Sean Baker, 
Oh yeah. Yeah, he boxed uh, boxed a few rounds with Gavin there on the uh, eight rounder in Whitchurch back in the day, and uh, you don't get to be that oily a pro without a few tricks, and doubtless he's passed them on to Nick. Yeah, you'd imagine so. Aaron Pirrett uh, decided to uh, stand for the break in the rounds. Getting some, uh, I was going to say, wise words from Simon, his dad. That's right, yeah. It's, uh, it's always a worry, father and son teams, but uh, Simon and Owen managed to carry it off, you know. From the top down, Mayweather and so on and yeah, so forth, yeah. you know, there's always a rift between father and son coaches, but uh, thus far, it seems to work. So far, so good. Second round, this uh, youth middleweight contest. Owen Pirrett in the red head guard against Nick Forrest in the blue. Bring him in, oh, bring him in. So Forrest trying to walk in behind his right hand. And that uh, when he jabs, Forrest tends to bend from the waist and almost leans forward. A lot of the jab comes from the body rather than the arm. So Pirrot trying some more body shots again. Again, digging those body shots into the ribs, trying to just weaken Forrest, slow him down a little bit. See the power coming in from, from Pirrot, definitely beginning to have some sort of effect, if only because it's giving uh, Forrest too much to think about defensively. Forrest, to his credit, keeping on coming forward. So the uh, the body sh top body shots and that was uh, well I think Forrest thought that might have been a bit of a low one but uh, it, the count's happening anyway. What do you think there, Craig? It's a protection count there. If it's uh, yeah, yeah, Owen's going to get worn in now for that one. So he's going to get a little bit of time there. If the referee deems it accidental or otherwise. But uh, this is the misapprehension of the of the standing eight count noise. It's very much a protection count just to allow him uh, eight seconds to, to recover. recover. That's yeah. right, entirely. Yeah. Doesn't mean to say he won or lost the round. Has no bearing, really. No. So in the, in the end, you know, Pirrit was uh, firing in the body shots and get, having some success with them. I suppose the, the number he was firing in, in the end, I suppose, inevitable. Yeah. Small percentage, i.e. one shot just dropped a little bit below the target area. That's right, one went south there. Um, fully acknowledged by Owen. And on we go. Yeah. So Forrest recovered fully from it by the look of it and pushing forward. So another slight delay because the uh, Pirate head guard has come loose. Slight adjustment, can't be very much longer in the round anyway. But just getting all things ship shape again. Again, concentrating on the power shots to the body when he can. Pirrot still trying to dig those shots in, catches him with a left hook to the chin. And that's the end of the round. Splattering of applause from the, uh, the diners. So uh, where's this one going then, Craig? I think it's closer than what you'd imagine, to be honest with you, Nigel. I mean, um, 
Nick is he, he's, he's quite clever behind the jab. He's nicking some points here and there. Uh, I think the, the, the body shots are having an effect on Nick. However, you can't rely on them. You know, you can't rely on the power shots. You've yeah. got to score points. And uh, sometimes you run out of ideas when the power's not working for you. Uh, you know, you can be a bit limited. But uh, just at the moment, I fancy Owen to be in front. Mm. But There's you, nothing else you're saying to the judges, you know, I'm, I'm putting a lot of physical effort, I'm, I'm dominating the contest. That's the impression he's trying to create, isn't that's it? That's right, entirely. But having said that, uh, Nick, he's got these, as I say, long levers, sneaky little shots, and I'm a success as well. Yep. Final round then between these two. Owen Pirrit in the redhead guard against Nick Forrest in the blue. Seventh fight of the night here at the Bristol Sporting Club December show. Plenty of advice coming from the outside the ring. And Forrest, Forrest showing the intent to come forward if he can. He probably has a pretty shrewd idea of what's going to come back from Pirrit, but he's stepping inside himself and just trying to rough his man up a little bit. And the, it's all getting a little bit untidy on the ropes there and the referee calls a halt again. I must make mention nice to the service referees this evening who have allowed the contest to flow, only absolutely intervene when they've had to. Excellent officiating. Yeah, yeah, certainly ha certainly has been. None of the fussiness that you can sometimes see. That's right. So it all just means that there's been even more action to enjoy. It's flowed throughout all the contests. Pirrit looking to regroup in the centre of the ring again. It's been a good uh, third round from Forrest though. He's come back well from that second round where he suffered a low blow. And he uh, seems to weather the worst of the storm from Pirrit's body shots and is coming on strong himself now. He's well in the contest. Pirrit again lands a big right to the, to the ribs. Such a fit kid, isn't he, Nick? He's such yeah. a fit guy. His body shots coming in, ripping and sapping his energy, and he's still plenty left in the tank, Nigel. Yeah. So, big, large breath out from Forrest as he recovered from another stinging body shot. Just trying to land something in the last 30 seconds of the round. Keeping his form well, Forrest. Pirrit again, showing all the physicality he has throughout the contest. And now it's being concluded at short range as they slug out the uh, bent arm shots close into the body. Ten seconds remaining. Big finish from somebody here. And Forrest doing well. Good finish from Forrest. A great finish there from yeah. Nick. Great finish. Bags of guts from the barroom lad, as yeah. you'd expect. Great yeah. contest. It certainly was. So, uh, from adversity, Nick Forrest found something really special in that last round and uh, put up an effort which he can be proud of, no matter what the final score might be. Let's see what the judges thought. The winner of the unanimous decision is Barrett in the red corner. contest of three Freeman rounds. Between the blue corner representing the army, Jack Adams. And in the red corner representing the Western Rangers, Jack Fisher. Fisher in the red, Adams in the blue.
So after a supporting contest, we're now back to the match between the Army and the Western Counties. Jack Fisher representing the, uh, the home side from Devizes, and he's up against Jack Adams from the Army. This is a light heavyweight contest. We've seen Jack Fisher a few times in this in this room on the Sporting Club, haven't we, uh, Craig? That's right, the reigning Western Counties belt holder, if you remember, Nigel. Uh, now 26 bouts, winning 12. Jack Adams from uh, 4 Battalion, Arimi. 16 bouts, winning 8. They're uh, having a bit of a look at each other to begin with. But don't let it catch fire before long. Yeah, I'm sure it will. So, coming towards the end of what's been another entertaining evening of, of boxing. All evenly matched, well contested contests. Fisher doing lots of uh, range finding. Good body movement. Just rocking backwards and forwards. And then lands a left hand on the way, way in. So they're both still assessing one another. Fisher tr tries to land a right hand. And uh, Adams from the uh, the army also just looking a little bit wary. Both both boxers poised like coiled springs, but not too much is springing from them just yet. Sorry, rightly so. <laughs> you wouldn't want to walk into one of those shots. But uh, some nice side steps there. Both guys trying to get the opening, and in glimpses they find it, don't they? Yeah. But uh, then they're back to passive again. Yeah. Um, but again, nicely. Mostly balanced. You've oh, it's balance, exactly the right word. Yeah. 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 I think it's going to be one of those matches uh, of uh, tactics more than anything, Nigel. Yeah. In a minute, some wag's going to shout out, hit him. <laughs> but there we are. Well, they, they, they are connoisseurs here at. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe now they're beginning to get the range of one another and Fisher steps in there, pushes the army man back. So it's a learning round, almost a body shot from uh, Fisher. He's turned out of the corner by Adams towards the end of the round. So not a high volume of uh, shots landed in this round, but plenty of manoeuvring. And uh, tactical battle there. Uh, but that was just a skirmish before the real thing, I think. I think so, Nigel. Um, again, very agile for bigger men. Um, lots of different uh, attempts to work the angles. Uh, thinking about and the Bristol Sporting Club audience obviously uh, appreciate the class here at boxing uh, but as I say these guys now it's really going to catch fire both corners going to advise them that they've got to kick on to make an impression yeah. so I think uh, things are going to start happening this round <clears throat> so Jack Fisher breathing in deeply in the uh, red corner as Craig said uh, the current belt holder from the Western Counties Challenge Belts. Another quick slug of water and back into the action again. Ken Brain just keeping the boxes apart until the uh, bell goes. There it is for round number two. Faint right left by Fisher trying to change the angle, open up something, steps in and throws. Adams, slightly more conservative, waiting for see what Fisher is going to throw at him. Talk about bobbing and moving from Fisher, but still being very selective with his shots. Tries the overhand right there that falls short. It's a moving target, of course, and Adams was good enough to get out of the way of it. 
Adams now himself flashing out the left jab just to again find the range, pushes it into the face of Fisher. Again, Fisher launches an attack, but Adams is quick enough on his feet to move out of the way. Whenever one of them uh, launches some sort of attack, the, the other is quick enough to just get out of trouble. So it's the fleetness of foot which is the best defensive weapon in this contest. That's right, Nigel. You can tell that, that neither of them are holding ground. They're, they're working very well in phases. Uh, it's kind of first and third boxing the guys are doing. So Jack might attack first, the army guy comes back, Jack with the uh, third attack. And uh, very clean, very nice to watch. They're covering a lot of ground as well around the ring, but a lot covering more ground than they are landing shots. But although now Fisher lands two body shots in succession there. And then left hook just about hits the target. Adams goes downstairs with a right hand and then charges forward, head down. Fisher throws out the jab once, twice. Lots of movement from the hips, ducking underneath the uh, jab of his opponent. Jab, jab, jab from Fisher at the moment. So it's uh, following a similar pattern to the for the first round, Craig. Really, isn't it? Still very wary of one another, very tactical, and yeah. Um, difficult to separate them, Nigel, at this stage, isn't it? Um, I quite fancy Jack to be in front because of the leading off, trying to make the fight. And uh, but some very good defensive work from both guys. Yeah. You can tell the little shoulder rolls, the little subtleties, the head movement. Uh, Cancelling the other guys' attack out. Uh, it's great. No one's really getting on top, are they? No, no. So, the uh, device's corner, trying to work out how their man can win the third round and with it possibly steal the win for the Western County side. Final round coming up. Over on the far side, uh, Jack Adams for the army. Up off his stool already. It's quite possible that uh, they're level at the moment, just depending what the judges have seen so far. So an impressive third round could be the clincher for either of these two. Jack Fisher in the white vest for the Western Counties against his opponent, Jack Adams from the Army in the Black. The light heavyweights here. Fisher. Still trying to work out how he can get inside and land. The army corner shouting, make him miss, which uh, their man has been doing quite frequently. They have indeed. It's uh, very clever stuff from um, both guys. Nice slip there from Jack. Upper body movement for both guys, very good. Defensively, obviously that's a defensive art line, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but it probably explains why there's a bit of a murmur in the room because uh, maybe you know, people are expecting blood and thunder. You yeah. know, uh, you know, some people maybe wouldn't appreciate the defensive art so much, but there's just as much skill in avoiding a punch as throwing one, isn't there? Very much so, and that's uh, that's the art of boxing. He that fights and moves away lives to fight another day. Make him miss, make him pay. So both busy halfway through the uh, final round. Ken Brain calls break. And 
there's work on the inside Fisher digging one in the ribs of Adams Adams now pushing him up against the ropes Fisher covering up trapped in that neutral corner and they're just trying to shoulder roll one another out of the way push the pushing contest that became suddenly didn't they? And they they both suddenly look a bit tired don't they oh so they turn into number eights didn't they yeah. <laughs> yeah. but uh let's go back to action again i fancy the pace has quickened a little bit here tonight in the late stages yeah and, and it's become a war of attrition in there both fighting in close <laughs> both swing and miss Back in the clinch again. Adams leaning in. Fisher back across the ring throws a tired looking right hand that went behind the head of Adams as he ducks into it. And there are the big finish now. They, they've heard the 10 second warning, so they're all seeing, both seeing if they can nick it at the end. And respect from both boxers, applause too. And what a lot of effort. And to be honest, I'm not sure who's won that. I just can't separate them, Nigel, I really can't. It was uh, half a dozen of one, six of the other, wasn't it? So uh, we'll just have to see what the judges thought. Thank you, yeah. Thank you very much. You did it on this vote on a split decision. Is Fisher in a red corner. then heavyweight contest between Simon Piasik of Sydenham and Ben Howard from the army and see what uh, what we have in store here between these two the big boys back in the ring again bound to be explosive I would have I would have said but uh, who knows how it might uh, turn out so Ben Howard, as I say, from the army in the black, and Simon Piasik, I think. I'll go with you, Knight, sir. <laughs> Piasik, yeah. And again, different body styles here again, as we've seen throughout the night, Knight. Yeah. Uh, still very much both their weight at uh, 84K. Very mobile again for bigger guys. Nice shot selection. I have to say, the standard of boxing tonight, even for novices, has been absolutely superb. And uh, I can't thank James Allen and his team enough from the Army Development Squad for providing us with the uh, absolutely fantastic opposition. Yeah, you couldn't wish for a better contests. Every single bout, you've wondered who might have won at the end. There's been no clear winners, really, have there? That's right, and that, that's a sign of a very, very good match. And. Uh, it's not been wasted on this uh, this audience tonight. Very appreciative of the, the guys' efforts. We're supporting club, the main uh, supporters of amateur boxing in the Western Counties. And uh, believe you me, that's appreciated, Nigel. Yeah, absolutely. So, coming towards the end of the first round between these two. Ten seconds to go. The army man just... Uh, on the offensive as we end round number one. And there is the bell that signals the first two minutes has gone by. 
Ben Howard for the army goes back to his uh, his corner. What do you know about Ben Howard? You've got a whole glossary of information about him, Craig, the uh, the army boy. That's right. He's um, three five engineers, 22 years of age, seven barracks, one in four. And I would suspect that he's better than that record, Lloyd, wouldn't you? Yeah. He's very stylish, very well schooled, obviously. And uh, Simon, Simon. Let's just say Simon. Simon, yeah. It's a uh, 84K915. Absolute load of experience in his corner there, Rob Haddon and Rob Scutt. Remember, we've seen uh, Rob Scutt's boys, the twins box here. Yeah. Regularly at Bristol Sporting Club. So that words of wisdom there to impart to, uh, to Simon. I suspect yeah. honours even just at this stage. But again, a good pace for big guys. Yeah. Well, it's definitely Simon, because who doesn't spell Simon with a Z? It's more of an eye test than the name. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. You need to get your eyes peeled for this one, the second round between the two, and Simon goes forward and lands a right hand. So, fast start to round number two. The uh, home boxer looking to pick up the pace in the early stages. His army opponent is uh, somewhat taller, of course, uh, Ben Howard in the black vest. So, PS6, Simon P6 looking to uh, keep busy and give his man something to think about, backs him up against the ropes and unleashes some uh, hook shots. Three two minute rounds this, this bout, remember. Certainly, the uh, PS6 is. Keep him busy, trying to force his man back, but uh, Howard is content to move around the ring and parry the shots and throw out that jab. Taller man. Pierce it just trying to come in underneath his the attacks from the army man and land. Piercic just getting trapped in that corner just a little bit. Wants to get back in the centre of the ring if he can. Right hand down stairs from uh, Howard. There goes 10 seconds to go or two successive left hands into the face of uh, Piercic and he's just hanging on a little bit be well pleased to hear the bell any second now it's the first time either man has really got through with telling shots and it was two in a row Craig and it uh, certainly caused him to rock back didn't it very clever there from Simon tied his man up uh, as soon as he was hurt and I would imagine that he was hurt there yeah. night um, I have to say this is this is intriguing going into this last round because uh, Simon won the first round for my money and uh, second round there I'd imagine to uh, to the soldier so all to play for in this last yeah I would think so just about the measure of it great club Sydney ABC uh, produced uh, John Knight ex-professional and uh, Dean Mills useful professional these days yeah so uh, good pedigree there yeah it certainly is so, two minutes remain in this contest. So here we go with... the final round between Simon Piercic and Ben Howard. Piercic in the uh, white vest for the Western Counties. Howard who landed those telling blows in the last seconds of the second round. So this is a fight that's uh, really up for grabs. Impress the judges and you could go home a winner tonight. Piercic goes downstairs with those two body shots but Howard responds to the head so 
minute to go in the final round. It's there to be uh, grabbed by one of these guys. And Howard turns him nicely onto the ropes, lands a couple of right hands. That comes Piasic, a good uppercut there by Howard. Just beginning maybe to get on top, is he, in this closing stage? As I think so, he's pressing Piasic back, who maybe, maybe the fitness is beginning to tell, and he's landing a few more shots than he was earlier in the contest. Uh, entirely right now, he's beginning to force the pace, isn't he? Some quality shots as well. And Simon. He's moving so well still, so some very, very good shots. Still hugely competitive, but you fancy that's that foot on the gas there from the soldier. Yeah. And uh, that may well clinch the decision. Ten seconds remaining. So there we are. Fantastic uh, contest between the two boys there. Ladies and gentlemen, the result of this bout was a unanimous decision to Howard in the blue corner. Ladies and gentlemen, this round has been sponsored by Bristol Car Commercials Body Repairs Bristol on table six. And also Robbie and Travis Rayford, West of England Group, table seven. And it's a welterweight contest of three three bit rounds. Between in the red corner representing Dowland Amateur Boxing Club, Ben Demery. And in the blue corner, representing Tottenham KO Club, Mike Freeman. Freeman in the blue, Danbury in the red. So the final bout of the night. Round one. And it's a welterweight contest featuring uh, Ben Demery from Downend and Mike Freeman from Cheltenham. Good way to end the night here, Craig. This is brilliant. This is a rematch, would you believe, from Dungarvan in County Waterford. Well, obviously, well, you know, I'm <laughs> surprised you had to point it out. We went over to the uh, Celtic Box Cup night and lo and behold, the draw came out that we boxed somebody from Gloucester. <laughs> so, uh, over in Dungarvan, very, very close contest. Uh, Favouring Mike Freeman. Mike is superbly uh, experienced and uh, far better than his record, I suggest. Ben, no, uh, no stranger for Bristol Sporting Club. Similar to twin brother Jake. Uh, so I suspect we're going to have a very good contest here. So no doubt a very easy match to make. They're probably both keen to fight one another again, were they? Well, neither the decider, but uh, I just believe Mike's been on the works Christmas do, so he's coming a little bit overweight. Oh, I see, right. That's right, but um, good enough to uh, admit that. And he's a solid, solid performer, is Mike Freeman. What did he have for pudding then? <laughs> what dreads to think. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he'll find out about it as uh, Demery reigns in shots to the body there. <laughs> Demery tries the left hand and then caught by Freeman who gets two left hooks to the body. Again, Freeman again aiming for the ribs. Demery lands a good right hand there as he allowed his man come in towards him and clipped him round the side of the head. Good left hand again from Demery gets through. Freeman's guard just dropping fractionally, and Demery was on it like a shot. Plenty of advice coming from uh, behind us, and Demery left to the body, right to the side of the head. And allows him to step in and then 
does beautiful step to the side and lands another right hand from close range. Back comes Freeman though, as you'd expect. Keep your range, Ben. Keep your range. Get all into it. Keep your range. Demery looking to put the pressure on as we come towards the end of the first round here. Ten seconds to go. Demery nice little uppercut from close range. Freeman comes back with some of his own. Swinging left. Freeman looking to end the round on a bit of a high. And that was a really, really combative first round. You see, it's just such a good contest, isn't it, Nigel? And uh, it was worth the ferry journey over <laughs> to, uh, to see it on the first occasion. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't been organising ships and all sorts from Dungarvan to come and see it, really. Well, at the end of the day, I don't think they could lay enough on. <laughs> but uh, as I say, it was just a great contest. And Mike Freeman, been around for so, so long, hasn't really fulfilled his potential. And he won't mind me saying that. How old is he then? Uh, Mike, but now he'll be around about 26, 27. Okay. Uh, but he's far better than his record. He's with uh, Cheltenham KO now, and uh, under the guidance of Simon there. And he's, he's a fantastic performer. He always gives value for money. Uh, ben Damry, we know the Damrys. Um, value for money for always. Absolutely. And if this, I were paying for it. That's right. <laughs> this is such a good contest. It really is. Yeah. So let's see what happens now then. Second round. Ben Demery from down in against Mike Freeman from Cheltenham. Right hand from Freeman, but Demery steps inside it. Mid to long, mid to long. Move your feet. And Freeman catching him with a couple of good left hands there. Demery pushing him away. Steps inside as Demery and clips him with a right hand to the body, but back comes Freeman with a good left and Freeman trying to double up with the left there. Demery just pushes him clear once more. Good jab, great jab by Freeman. Demery comes back with the right hand. So uh, that lean back there. Mike is very aggressive when he let, lets go, he's two handed. Yeah. So uh, if you can just nullify the attack and come back with counters, the last thing Ben needs to do is hold his feet and have a fight with Mike. He just won't win that way. Okay, well, Demer is having a certain amount of success, but Freeman is a wily customer by the look of it and flicking out that jab again. And in comes Freeman with the left hand to the body. Then we just want to keep his head up by our referee. Good right hand by Demery clips him on his way in and then steps inside. Freeman again flicking out those jabs. Good right hand again by Demery. I said previously, Nigel, I can't you know, credit the army officials enough. They've let the guys really get on with things. Yeah. And uh, that's a sign of great officiating and fair play to them. Yeah, definitely. 30 seconds to go in the round. Good right hand by Demery from range. Freeman steps in and traps him against the ropes, clubbing right hand there. Demery needs to get her out from that, those ropes there. Ten seconds to go and Demery trying to unload on the ropes. Good uppercut dug into the ribs. Slap of appreciation from Freeman. Yeah, they're good mates as well, are the guys. They are really they? are, yeah, absolutely. Mike's a level two coach as well. Okay. Works hard. Up with uh, Simon at Cheltenham KO. And uh, bringing the guys through. And what a bit, 
couldn't get a better role model. Just absolutely loves the game. Good sportsman every time. And uh, half about boxer himself, isn't he? Well, exactly. He's certainly practicing what he preaches, isn't he? And uh, if his uh, young charges are watching this, then they'll see what they have to do to uh, really achieve. Fantastic effort has been put in by both boxers. Hard to pick between the two of them. That's what the judges will have to do in just over three minutes' time. The final round of the final bout on the show. Here we go then. It's there to be uh, won by either Ben Demery or Mike Freeman. Demery ducks in and tries to land the left hand. Screw shot, backhand for another. First and third. Screw shot, backhand for another. First and third, Ben. Screw shot, backhand for another. Right hand from Demery. In comes Freeman again. Going to the body. Five seconds gone. Step right. Step right. Demery. Keep it long. Keep working. Trying to keep him at distance. Step with the left foot, Ben. Freeman again, that clubbing left hand down below. Digging it into the ribs. And then on his way in, but he's caught by right hand by Demery. Defensive right hand at Demery with an uppercut. Step right from the left foot. Out the corner, turn it Freeman. Don't climb on him! Don't climb on him! Box! Oh, Step across with the left up, Ben! Step with it! Freeman trying to work below and a left hand by Demery. Step back, Ben! Step again, another war of attrition close in between these two. Demery steps in and then lands two successive right hands. The last one, an uppercut, which rocked back the chin of. Uh, Freeman, but Freeman comes bouncing back with plenty of his own, and Demery just traps on the bottom rope, but gets away. That was a low blow. That was a definite low blow there. And uh, safety count. You've got 90 seconds if you need it, Ben. Take your time. So, Demery again. Demery again. Demery again. Demery again. Demery again. So the clock has stopped to allow Demery to recover from <coughs> the low blow. Nice shot, mate. So, um, deep breaths and Demery just chatting to the referee who uh, says keep him up and now uh, they're off again. Step right, right hand! Step right! Step right! Demery again working hard. For Freeman lands the left hand. Demery clubbing right. Powerful shots from both men. And they're really going for it now in the closing stages of the contest. Good work by Demery. Right hand to the ribs there. Gets in, ducks the shoulder, and now last 10 seconds. Freeman's tied up on the ropes. That's just about going to be the last of the action. Not going to be time for very much more. There's the bell, in fact, and that's the end of the contest. And just as close as Craig predicted it was going to be between two true warriors in the ring, and that was a great advertisement for them both. It's always a fantastic contest, Noise. That's. Uh that's two bouts now they've had. Surely there must be a trilogy, even probably more. Thank you, gentlemen. The result of number 10 is a split decision in favour of Demery in the red corner.
Nothing is right.